Curran. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Communications and Information Technology. Will the government abide by the final unbundled Bitstream access service price review determination issued by the Commerce Commission today? Mr. Speaker. Honourable Amy Adams. Mr. Speaker, following the announcement this morning of the Commerce Commission's final UBA price, the government is currently working through the implications of that decision and hasn't made any decisions. Supplementary, Supplementary. Claire Curran. Thank you. Given the Commission's final price determination announced today, followed, quote, to the letter of the law, unquote, a process set down in 2011 in the government's own legislation, will the government enforce its contract with Chorus and tell them to get on with the job of rolling out ultra-fast broadband according to the price and conditions negotiated under that contract? In response, uh, Honourable Amy Adams. Well, we expect all parties to perform their contractual obligations with the government, and to date, uh, all the LFC partners have been doing that very well. Supplementary, Supplementary. clear, Karen. Supplementary to the Minister. Does the government's ultra-fast broadband contract with Chorus contain an expectation by Chorus that the copper price would be held at a certain level above the price announced today by the Commerce Commission? Honourable Amy Adams. I have no knowledge of any such provision. Supplementary. Uh, supplementary, Claire Curran. If Chorus can't deliver on the negotiated contract and continues to press for government intervention in the price of copper or for the government to give it more money to roll out fibre, will the government declare that Chorus has defaulted on the contract and re-tender it? Uh, Honourable Amy Adams. Well, Mr Speaker, as I said in the answer to the primary, the government hasn't made any decisions. But what I would say is that the concern for the government is not about chorus. The concern for the government is ensuring that the end users of telecommunication services in New Zealand get access to high quality, high speed, world leading telecommunications. That is what we're committed to and that is what we are determined to see happen. Excellent. Excellent. Supplementary, uh, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Does the, minister, does the minister agree with recently national a recently nationalised pollster and blogger Kiwi Blog, uh, that the government should, quote, please, 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 just don't take Chorus's word for it and make a decision based on a press release, and instead call in the best independent accountants to verify Chorus's claims? And if so, does the Minister's right hand know what the writer hand is doing? Honourable Amy Adams. Well, as far as I can even understand the member's question, I can assure the, that member that the government doesn't make decisions on press releases, which is why we are now, as I said, carefully working through the, implementation, the impl uh, implement, implications of the pricing decision, uh, and we will do that very carefully before we make any decision. And can I reiterate to that member that our concern is to ensure that New Zealand gets access to ultra-fast fibre communications, because that is what is in the long term interests of New Zealand. That is our focus in that regard. That has always been our focus. But if that member is alleging uh, that Chorus is making their numbers up, which I think comments to that effect have been made, then I would suggest that that's a very serious allegation, that Chorus are under very strong disclosure obligations. And if that is a concern that he has, then he should raise that with the appropriate authorities. That concludes question time. Uh, order, members. Um, I wish to make an announcement in relation to a correction of votes and on the 27th of March when the committee of